we live in a twilight world and uh, let's do another quick recording. I'm uh, up late at night again. So it's nice and cool in my car. So yeah, man, we can do a quick recording. And um, hang on, where's that mouse? We might have to turn the mouse on for this one. And yeah, I'm gonna carry on with the theme of um, time travel and and it being the possible explanation as to, you know, things that are going a bit crazy at the moment. Um, yesterday, I took myself on a little date and I went to a cinema and I watched the latest um, DC comic book film about The Flash. The, the Flash is the one that can run really fast. And um, yeah, this I thought it was a good film. I know a lot of people were slagging the film off. But um, it's essentially about time travel. He basically the 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 flash can uh he he can run so fast that he can basically run at the speed of light and travel back through time and you know it's a good film another one of these films where it's about changing the timeline uh what we call the butterfly effect all this kind of um business you know classic time travel stuff but today i want to talk about you know what they call the philadelphia experiment and uh i best do a bit of a disclaimer like I'm not an expert on the Philadelphia experiment. Um, I know the rough storyline of it. I'm sure, like a lot of you, you've come across it at some point in your life. I've never seen the film. Uh, yep, there's apparently there's a film about it. Um, uh, I'll give a quick overlay about it in a minute, but um, essentially. Well, most of what I've learned about the Philadelphia Experiment, I've learned off a guy called Russ Ben. And I really recommend, you know, anyone who's got a spare, you know, a couple of hours or anyone who's a bit bored of the podcasting world at the moment, go back and listen to anything where Russ Ben has covered the um, Philadelphia Experiment. Either podcast, I know he's got, I think he's got a book out about it, which I haven't seen, but I've overheard him on podcasts talking about the Philadelphia Experiment. And he basically puts full, and yeah, he's basically been my... Um, my teacher, I shall we say, when it comes to the Philadelphia experiment, and I think he's the most up to date guy. He's really done like um, you know, he's brought it forward into um in the modern day age. And he basically puts forward that this is the real name, the Philadelphia experiment and effect is the real name for what a Mandela effect is. And I agree with him, because he, he basically puts forward that, you know. We shouldn't be calling it the Mandela effect because the character of Nelson Mandela has nothing to do with it. He is just um, an observational effect of it. And um, he theorizes that the Philadelphia experiment is, you know, when they started fucking around with time travel and so on. So, um, so yeah, the first time they... Um, did the Philadelphia experiment it was like, you know, it was, I think it was USA. It was a second year being involved in World War Two. And um, yeah, I'll just do a quick overlay of, of what it what it is to my recollection. I mean, you you know, feel free to go and read the books, watch your films. I'm just going to do it off the top of my head. So forgive me if I've got the mythology of the Philadelphia experiment wrong. But essentially what they were doing was the US Navy was testing out um, or as an experiment to see if they could make a battleship, a Navy battleship, become invisible. Um, and, you know, legend has it, according to the mythology, the conspiracy theory mythology of the Philadelphia experiment, the battleship, well, yeah, it did go invisible, but it phased out of reality. And when it phased back into reality... Half the crew members were gone and, you know, some crew members were, you know, fused with the ship. Some had burst into flames. And basically, every crew member that was on this uh, battleship, the USS Eldridge, had a shitload of problems forever, for the rest of their lives. Yeah, some of them would just burst into flames. Some would continue to phase in and out of reality. And yeah, like I said, a lot of them just disappeared. Like, I think half the crew never came back. Now, a lot of people are saying that
a lot of people saying that actually it was always about time travel, that the whole making it go invisible thing was just a, um, you know, a cover story. And it was a way to trick the guys, the, the sailors in the Navy to be a part of it. They thought they were just going to be, you know, hidden from radar, but really they got, you know, chucked into a, a, a dangerous time travel experiment. And like I said, yeah, I'm not saying that the Philadelphia experiment is real or not. I'm just merely making a YouTube video and just tying it all in. So yeah, anyway, the first time they did it was 1943. And then apparently the second time they fucked around with it was 1983. Okay, so that's 40 years. Right? And according to Russ Ben, guess what? The next 40 years, which is 2023, is the now... They're going to possibly fuck around with it again, okay? Now, you know me, and if, you know, if you've been with me a long time, you know we have to be very careful with this kind of stuff and talking about it because if you believe it, you might end up manifesting it. So please don't, like, think this is going to happen. We're merely just being aware of it, okay? You've got to be very, very careful because some of you guys out there, you might be what I call the particle accelerator, and you might be the chosen ones that can manifest reality. So if you end up getting tricked into believing something, you might be the fucker that's actually unbeknownst manifesting it. So just be careful, yeah, with this. So anyway, 40 years. So now, um, apparently it's August 12th is when someone's going to flick a switch or press a button or, or whatever. And the number 40 is... I don't know... It, it, you know, the speculation is that it's tied into Earth cycles of 40 years. And of course, Philadelphia itself is on the 40th parallel. Another thing that, you know, Russ Ben and his friend Michael Wan, another great um, synchro mystic cover, is the 40th parallel. Because a lot of things have happened in Philadelphia. You know, the British Empire pretty much expanded big time out of, you know in and around Philadelphia and that place, you know, expansion, especially technology, you know, technological expansion came out of Philadelphia. But anyway, we digress. So yeah, 40-year cycles on the 40th par parallel. There's something to it, man. There's something to it. Now, as we know, and one of my favourite topics and, you know, where I actually get a lot of responses, all my kind of little YouTube videos about time travel and how time has been fucked up lately, or especially over the last three years. And I've, you know, been doing a lot of videos on speculating about what that is. And uh, so, you know, I was born in 1987, so I was born after this second Philadelphia experiment. So I haven't experienced one, but I'm going to go into this one. So this is going to be my first ever one. And, you know, what can I say, man? It might be the thing we're looking for, right? It might be the explanation about why time is so messed up or was messed up. I guess it still is messed up. It still is moving very fast. Not as fast as it was about a year ago, but, you know. And this might be it, you know. We might be heading towards what in the Donnie Darko world they would call a tangent universe, and I don't know if you can see there, you might need to zoom in, but this is a, an image from Donnie Darko where he's sitting around, you know, the black hole that appears in the sky. Um, if you remember that film, another great time travel film, um, you know, essentially what happens is a tangent universe occurs because a jet engine from another universe falls into his universe and Frank the Rabbit, his spirit guide saves him and messes with his death, you know. He essentially, he skips his fate with death, which causes a tangent universe. And in a tangent universe, because it's not meant to be, that's when things go fucking wild, right? Because it's a universe where people are not meant to be living and there's living people and there's just mad shit happening and... um in the film, Donnie Darko has a, a character called Roberta Sparrow and she has this book called The Philosophy of Time Travel. And if you've seen the director's cut, you know, you often see pages of her book come up 
And there's a lot of really great terminology that comes about in this uh, so-called fictional book within a fictional film. And she basically puts out there that um, there are different types of people, like Donnie Darko would essentially be the living receiver, which makes him have special powers, right? Whereas everyone else would be kind of like the manipulated living. And what happens is as they get closer and closer to the, you know, to the centre of this wormhole, they start to go more and more insane because they subconsciously know it's over for them in this reality. And if we look at, reflect on our current reality, you know, people are, it appears people, a lot of people are kind of losing their shit or, or on the, you can, you can tell we're starting to crack, right? So yeah, here's just another graphic I just put up there, you know. You know, the red and the blue timelines. I don't want to keep going over that. That's a thing from Tenant, you know, red moving forward, blue moving back. But, um, you know, this is essentially why this current thing is happening of, of old habits returning, right? Or things that you used to do in the past that you said you'd never do again are now like back in your mind, right? For example, me, I, I said I would never live in a city again. I said I said I would never work in construction again. Yeah, about a week ago, I found myself looking at um, flats in a city and I've started to pick up the phone when the construction agencies call me, you know? I'm like, fuck, man, what's going on? Like, why am I getting the urge to go back to shit that I said I'd never go back to? And it's, I got a feeling it's because we're drawing closer to this... Um, Center point, which then sends us back in time. And remember, I'm saying this, um, you know, psychologically, yeah? Or consciousness-wise. So there's probably now another version of you heading backwards and you're, you're sharing a consciousness, you're sharing a soul. So if you've, you know, if you're one of these people that have quit smoking for 20 years and you find yourself, like, want, desperately wanting a fag, that's because... There's a version of you from, you know, wherever, over here. Let me, let me get the pen out, shall I? Yeah, so there's probably a version of you back on this timeline, say here, that's also heading towards the centre point. And you're obviously here. And you're starting to get, you know, the crossover, right? You're interacting with your old self. And let's go a bit nuts here. Let's go a bit, you know, woo-woo. Because potentially, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen. They're talking about August the 12th, right? This is the day that someone's going to flick a, flick a switch. So don't be surprised if, you know, an ex-partner you haven't seen for a couple of years kind of re-enters in your life. Um, an old job that you used to have that you, you kind of miss... Like, they call you up, and they offer you a job, you know? Weird shit like that. Or maybe an item. An item you owned that you lost years ago, you haven't seen for, like, years, reappears in your possession. A piece of jewellery or something. Maybe a ring you lost. A ring you lost ten years ago, you suddenly find it. It just, it just like, almost, like, drops out of the sky, Right? A bit like the jet engine from Donnie Darko. It literally just drops out of the sky back into your reality. This shit could happen, man. I don't know. Then again, it could be as per usual. Absolutely fuck all happens. But this is going to be something for people that are kind of like... Um, switched on, you know, spiritually aware. The average NPC in Normie isn't really going to be able to fathom this kind of shit. It's for people that are going to be quite energetically sensitive to changes in the atmosphere and the reality and so on, yeah? I don't know. Here's another example. You might have had maybe 10, 20 years ago um, a dodgy ankle that's kind of repaired now. That ankle pain might come back now. So if you're wondering why the ankle pains suddenly reappeared in your life, it's because, you know, we're essentially en entering a, a point a centre point in time. 
and we're heading closer and closer in it. Right, right now, the rings are quite big, but as we kind of get closer and closer, the rings are going to get smaller and smaller. And I think some of us might, you know, potentially realize that there's something going on here in the center. Now, Ross Ben recommend, recommends, you know, grounding yourself on that day. He literally recommends you grounding yourself, being stood barefoot out in nature and pretty much like grabbing onto a tree to avoid any kind of um, manipulation in time. Will I do that? I don't know. Like I just said earlier, I don't, you've got to be very, very careful with believing this stuff because you might manifest it. So I don't know. It's going to be interesting to say the least. Now, the original name for the Philadelphia experiment was actually uh, the Rainbow Project. Right? And what are you seeing everywhere at the moment? You go on social media, you go down your local high street, you walk past your local like um, town hall, what are you seeing? That goddamn Rainbow Pride flag. Now, is this tied into it? Is that what this is? Is that why the rainbow is just on everyone's consciousness? It has nothing to do with pride or LGBTQ, whatever. It's just subconsciously the Westworld programming knows that the rainbow project is firing back up. Now, rainbow in itself, you know, that might be... I've, you know, I'm not... I've never time travelled as far as I know. Not, con not, you know, purposefully anyway. But who knows? Maybe when you time travel, maybe that's what you see. Loads of rainbow flags. I don't know. There might be something there. I might throw this over to um, HV at some point. I might do a conversation with her this week maybe and throw this at her, you know. Is there any which way in which, you know, Roy G. Biv, the colours of the rainbow are tied into time travel? I imagine there is some way or shape or form. Another thing I saw today, and you might have seen it yourself, it's just, it's just everywhere at the moment. Well, I say everywhere, everywhere on a black cube. You know, your TV, your smart device, your, your, your telephone, uh, your laptop, your PC. But there's a young kid who's broken a Rubik's Cube uh, world record. Now, what is a Rubik's Cube? other than just a, you know, a cube of rainbow colours, right? And he's broken it in like something, I don't know, under three seconds or whatever, right? It's everywhere. Rainbows are everywhere at the moment. Whether it's people flying the pride flag, like, you know, generally behind it, or whether it's people getting caught up into the double cross kind of operation of fighting against it, rainbow flags everywhere in the conscious. You know, and of course, we had that thing over in New York where there was a huge orange cloud that looked exactly like the film Blade Runner 2049. Yeah, man, there's just a lot of shit going on. So just be aware, OK, we might be heading into a tangent universe, which should be a good. It might be a good thing because once the tangent universe is shut down, everything goes back to normal. I mean, what is normal, really? If you've got, you know, your eyes open and, you you know, the eyes to see how this uh, illusionary Plato's cave really works, what is normal? Maybe it might carve the NPCs down a little bit. I don't know. One thing in the um, Roberta Sparrow's philosophy of time travel is that she mentions the ar artifact. Usually the artifact which could be something very kind of like symbolic, like a sword, an arrow. In the case of Donnie Darko, it was the jet engine, but that artifact has to go back to its original timeline to um, sort the of, sort of mess out, right? Sort out the disturbance, the tangent universe. And I, I'll be honest with you, what I've noticed in the media over the last, definitely over the last two years, is a lot of these historical artifacts are being returned to their original country of origin. So as you can imagine, places like the, the British Museum and stuff, they've got loads of stolen artifacts, haven't they? Egyptian, African, whatever, you know. All across the world, these stolen artifacts, and a lot of them are getting sent back to their original homeland. 
And maybe that's it. Maybe all the artifacts are getting put back where they should be. I don't know. Anyway, I think I've rambled on enough. We live in a twilight world. There are no friends at dusk.